Hello, my name is Claire, and if there is anything Assassin's Creed Valhalla has taught me, it's that being a Viking in medieval times was freaking awesome. Sailing from Norway to England, nothing longer than a single loading time. Sneaking easily past Saxons who historically had less spatial awareness than goldfish. And don't even get me started on how Vikings could fit over 50 pieces of armor in their pants. History is fascinating. But I'm gonna get real with you for a moment. As someone who has virtually sold their soul to the Assassin's Creed series, I have never stopped being amazed by how these games not only depict, but recreate history. I was jumping around Victorian London the other day and I had this thought, could these games count as legitimate historical sources that when looked at through a scholarly lens, become tools for interactively interpreting history and potentially redefining the very process of learning about our past? <laughs> no, they're video games. Killing, stabbing, petting dog fun oh fuck whether you're an avid gamer or not i'm willing to bet you've at least heard of the action rpg murder simulator assassin's creed launching into the industry stratosphere in 2007 with assassin's creed 1 this series has gone on to spawn 12 main installments and another 12 spin-off titles while the stories vary between each game the general formula is become assassin assassinate run away assassinate wrong person collect some stuff leap of faith <laughs> Again. Die, die some more, sneak, fail horribly at sneaking, and tailing missions. <laughs> no! He didn't even see me! F die! Fing f mother of f any f Aside from being the first to coin the synchronization tower mechanic and the famous leap of faith that in real life would kill you, Assassin's Creed is probably most known for its history stuff. Namely, how every entry is set in a different, very distinguishable period of time. Let me see, you've got the Third Crusade, Renaissance Venezia, Colonial America, Pirates of the Caribbean, La France, steamy London, Ancient Egypt, a bit of Greece here and there, and some sexy Saxon times. This series also dips a toe into a lot of other significant periods of history, but we're going to narrow it down just to keep things a little more simple. Known to consult historians, scholars, and field experts during the development process of each game, Ubisoft does not shy away from offering huge attention to detail in faithfully representing historical settings. It's pretty safe to say that at least in a spatial sense, Assassin's Creed strives to perfectly recreate iconic time periods in their absolute entirety. Geographically, materialistically, biographically, architecturally, culturally, sociologically, ideologically, economically, the works. <laughs> While there's of course a slew of games out there that also utilize an historical backdrop for the sake of contextual framing and narrative, few permit a freedom quite like the Assassin's Creed series does. Recreating real world locations, major events and influential icons to the T, Assassin's Creed's greatest strength will always be its devout and authentic representation of the historical moments that shaped our world. I will never forget the time my sister came home from her trip to Italy and played Assassin's Creed 2 a few days later. Because Ubisoft have virtually recreated Venice close to geographical and architectural perfection, she was able to show me the exact location that she stayed at, like the hotel and the restaurant across the road where she would eat out with her friend. Like, absolutely mind-bending. With this level of attention to detail, it's no wonder initiatives like Ubisoft's Discovery Tour can actually utilise these spaces as a form of virtual tourism, allowing us to not only freely navigate spaces of the past, but to actively engage with them. And the fact that this representation becomes our playground, a fully interactive and authentic landscape we are invited to become part of, well, it gets you thinking. Should video games count as legitimate academic sources of historical interpretation? What I mean by this is basically what is its value when it comes to historical discourse, or basically a discussion of how we see history and how history has shaped who we are today. Can it be taken seriously as a text, like as seriously as a thesis or a scholarly work? And can it be used within an educational context to actually teach people about history? To start us off, it's important to understand how Assassin's Creed's impressive degree of realism is a big part of why we love playing these games, most of the time. Authenticity, or at least a sense of it, makes these settings, the cities, the people, feel real to us as players. This further validates our engagement and our reception to them as believable representations of societies that once existed. The I was there when that happened phenomenon is what excites us at the fact that we can surf down the Great Pyramid of Giza, attend the signing of the Declaration of Independence, even have a chill convo with our mate Leonardo. And I mean, what kind of person doesn't fangirl at helping Charles Dickens solve a murder mystery or having a theological debate with Socrates? Yeah. I did that. Why do these moments feel so incredibly awesome? Well, because unlike awkward high school lessons on colonialism or the essays we had to write about how living in ancient times blows, we're no longer passive observers of history, but 
active drivers of it. Our engagement with the worlds of Assassin's Creed are congruent with the progression of history. Our interactions the sole trigger of the world's most iconic events. Whether you complete that optional mission or not, you're the one pushing history into motion. And this capacity for interaction has some pretty insane applications when you think about it. Let's start with the most obvious. Dummies like me can finally understand what the hell was going on in history. As an Australian who went to an Australian school, I wasn't taught a shred about American history. It was obviously not included in our curriculum. I had no idea what the heck the independence thing was all about. It was a paper signed by some dudes. That's all I really cared to know. But when I encountered Assassin's Creed 3 in the ripe days of 2012, I wasn't just given a history lesson on the war for independence and the conflict, particularly of British occupation. I played it and experienced it, basically lived it, additionally through the eyes of a Native American protagonist, which shows a perspective that few secondary history sources will proactively include. The key here is that video games are about playing stories rather than reading them. When it comes to learning about history, Video games allow for these complex stories of the past to become embedded within modern context, to be more accessible to us than ever before. By extension, history becomes digestible, visual, experimental. The freedom games provide allows us to engage with real events in ways no textbook can offer. Think about how gaming technologies and mechanics have also evolved from Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 1500 Valhalla, and you'll notice how the potential as representative worlds has only been increasingly achieved over the series' 14-year lifespan. On today's systems, entire countries can be rendered on the go, cities with staggering detail populated and teeming with vitality. Literally, Assassin's Creed brings history to life. Yes, we tend to stab our way through it all, and obviously there's the tiny issue of occasional inaccuracy and the small major overarching plot about an entire fictional precursor race ruling the world, but come on, we gotta leave the writers some wriggle room. Assassin's Creed doesn't just make learning history more accessible to general people like you and me. It also incorporates a pretty crucial and fascinating byproduct that a lot of games are known for. Empathy! Games and their capacity for promoting empathy in players is a pretty common area of discourse, and there has been a heck of a lot of studies that demonstrate this. Fundamentally, this is because the player is the key agent for change. We don't watch the events happen before us like a passive audience. We make them happen. When we step into the shoes of an avatar or character we control, the line dividing the player from the virtual space blurs. Through our actions, our choices, even our movement, we become partial, important, involved, and eventually we'll begin to feel an emotional connection to a narrative or place the game has us interacting with. This is why video games are so impactful, because they're interactive media that directly channels our engagement and fuels it right back to us, fulfilling our sense of place and importance. This emotional connection is something I guarantee you have felt while playing Assassin's Creed, which has increasingly come to adapt traits from role-playing games. While the formula for meaningful engagement was there from the very beginning of the series, there's no denying the power these games have in cultivating empathy, in deeply connecting us to the characters and the situations we facilitate. The more our identity becomes associated with our lead assassin, be it Ezio, Connor, or Edward Kenway, the greater our attachment becomes with their perspectives of history, and naturally, the more we're bound to learn something from it. So next time you're plunged into the forefront of the French Revolution, the empathy we feel makes the experience more than factual, but visceral, and occasionally very, very broken. So far, we've established that Assassin's Creed can be used as a super powerful history tool that not only makes history accessible, but emotional and interactive. But just how does it hold itself as a legitimate academic source? To answer this question, we need to regard the Assassin's Creed series as a cultural product, or by extension, something that was made in modern times and influenced by modern values. We need to look at this from a broader perspective, to think like historians. During the mid to late 20th century, when space invaders and Pac-Man pretty much constituted the capacity for digital digital technology, the potential for video games to convey complex historical discourse was largely not achievable, at least not visually. Fast forward to the 90s and computers got smaller, programming got more complex, and technology became efficient enough to generate minimal but slightly more interactive spaces. Suddenly, games like Civilization and Age of Empires, despite their simple premises, were among the first to represent historical periods as playable experiences. The past was becoming the setting. While this sparked a pretty exciting application of game development, studies on antiquity and video games suggest that due to the technical limitations of the time, these representations largely weren't implemented for the sake of historical discourse, but rather because they offered a useful setting for game developers to work off. 
Antiquity in video games would have been initially employed as a pseudo-historical alibi, which provided a convenient, pre-established context and a set of referential codes within which to set certain games. Now, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> it's basically saying that games weren't intentionally developed as historical referential frames, but first and foremost as entertainment systems that used familiar historical periods as a pre-established backdrop. In other words, developers drew from this basic, collective idea of what, say, ancient Greece looked like, and used this visage as a framework through which to build their ludic systems and narrative. Historic representation was simply more useful as a cosmetic for entertainment than it was an educational insert, at least in a mainstream sense. But the games of the 90s aren't the games of now, and there has been a lot of cinematic influence on how cutscenes, action sequences, and the camera is utilised. When video games were just emerging, films generally carried a closer, more commentative relationship with history simply because their format permitted them to portray these ideas more directly to audiences. But today, video games are capable of more than ever before, and with the addition of voice acting, rendering landmarks and cities to scale, and more fluid animations, their scope for historical engagement arguably now surpasses films in how they could educate and provide more authentic interpretations of history. So you've got a fully interactive system with ultra-realistic graphics that not only bring history to life but allow you to play with it. What I want to know is how a history teaching tool as powerful as the Assassin's Creed series has just flown under the Skull Lake radar for so long. Like, why aren't more people taking this seriously? Think about the connotation of playing and you remember that games must first and foremost be I'm really hot. Why did I do this? <laughs> no matter how much they may teach us about the complex political corruption of the Catholic Church or the complex political corruption of the Industrial Revolution or the complex political corruption of American colonialization, there's a lot of political corruption issues in this series. <laughs> Games have expectations to be fulfilled. Gameplay to incorporate, navigation, maps, interfaces, combat systems, all of which may be seen to potentially undermine the video game series' academic legitimacy in the name of prioritizing the need for entertainment. A common argument I came across was that violence in Assassin's Creed is used as a sort of feigned sense of progression, that our interactions with the game are basically a meaningless illusion because they're disconnected from any historical reality. I mean, I see where this is coming from, but of course as players we're smart enough to figure out what is and isn't historically accurate. And yet, progression through violence tends to be a staple for a lot of role-playing games. That's kind of just how they roll, for better and for worse. If I'm taking part in some tea dumping in Boston, then you're probably going to want to throw some red coats in there just to spice things up a little bit. But why should fun be a bad thing in learning about how the Boston Tea Party was an instrumental political process in going against the oppression of the British Parliament? Obviously, I'm not at all implying that gamers have short attention spans or that we lack the capacity to be interested in history itself, but the demographic of popular media is a lot broader than the scholars and enthusiasts who have a niche interest in antiquity. So for history to become accessible, it must also become enjoyable. Engaging. Personally, I feel that if the format of learning history has to change so that more people can understand it, then that's good. Take into consideration how historical set pieces are transformed into gameplay mechanics. Ben Franklin's almanac pages become collectibles in Assassin's Creed 3. Mythological Greek monsters are used as secret boss battles in Odyssey. Florence Underground as a parkour challenge. In a way, the integration of modern gaming conventions with historical artifacts and events helps to present something foreign to us in a way that is familiar and interesting. History made more interactive is simply a product of the technologies of the 21st century, and it's not an idea we're unfamiliar with. Increasingly, the past is made more familiar to us through a modern association. Ubisoft themselves take pride in saying that their games are products of various cultures, religions and beliefs, regardless of the historical period they're depicting. And in a really cool way, the influence of modern culture on our perceptions of past cultures is a sort of bleeding effect in its own right. Yes, these games can't change the events of the past, but they can change history because of the added value, perspectives and representations they offer. And that's what history is after all. It's not literally what was, but a perception of what was. The truth is not objective because none of us actually lived in those times, so all we can do is make inferences, suggestions, guesses. My favourite consequence of this is that Assassin's Creed, being a product of our time, not only provides an interpretation of the past, but challenges it by presenting the unheard side of it. Suddenly, the long-suppressed perspectives of people who have been ignored in history for so long, minority ethnicities and classes, cultures that have been left in the dark, are now being written in. The gaps in history are being filled. Societies who have been oppressed for centuries are now seeing considerate and powerful representation through protagonists like Aveline, Adewale, and Connor, providing a new take on key events that were once only written by those in power. 
While a lot of us act like we don't really care about history, and yeah, we play Assassin's Creed for the assassinating, you can't deny that history is bloody important. Learning about where we came from and why our societies are the way they are is literally what defines us as human beings. We culturally cannot function without a basic, very universal understanding of our past. The number one lesson Assassin's Creed teaches us is that memories are our most precious resource, that delving into the past is crucial to understanding our present. This is the Animus' role in the franchise. Its placement is a reminder of the importance of exploring history to make sense of the future. It's quite literally a metaphor for our endeavours to understand where we came from, to figure out our cultural and therefore personal identity. And the incorporation of the modern times narrative, as much as we groan whenever we appear in it again, just exemplifies how Assassin's Creed is truly self-aware in its exploration of history. Yes, not everything explored in this game is 100% accurate, but no legitimate study ever is. The fundamental truth of history is that objective truth is unachievable, not just because we're working solely off clues and remnants from a totally different time, but because its interpretation is subjective, applied uniquely within different cultures and different contexts. John Tosh, a prominent British historian who has actually given a lot of thought into the actual practice of history, and to his credit has actually looked at it through a gaming perspective, really brings the argument home. Historians are not the guardians of universal values, nor can they deliver the verdict of history. The main task of the historian became to find out why people acted as they did by stepping into their shoes, by seeing the world through their eyes and as far as possible by judging it by their standards. Assassin's Creed is a video game series, one that's entertaining, where you murder some people, sing sea shanties on the Caribbean, chase Templars, swan dive, and explore entire civilizations reimagined from the past. Its interactive features, incredible detail, and accessibility make it a piece of media so, so worthy of serious academic consideration. But it's also so much more than that. It's a series thousands of people, historians and non-historians alike, have poured their time and passion into creating and sharing with us, providing new perspectives and broadening our understanding of how we are, who we are. And to me, that's how this series is changing history. Are we at the end? Are we finished? Oh my god. Thank you so, so much for sitting through this chonky boy of a video. The script took me an absurdly long time to write just because there were so many facets and contradictions in the argument that was really difficult to narrow down into one cohesive video. But I hope it largely makes sense and that you got something out of it. I realise now through doing this that I'm actually really passionate about why games such as the Assassin's Creed series are really important to history in the way we see it because they offer so much more than traditional texts ever could. It makes me really sad that video games are often written off in a scholarly sense simply because people see them as just entertainment, but I wanted this video to encourage a really serious consideration of yes, they're video games, and look what they can do. As always, your time and your subscription really means the world to me, and I would really appreciate if you have any ideas for a future video, please pop them down in the comments and your thoughts. I'd really love to know your own ideas. If there's something else that you're also passionate about, handball it my way, and I would be really excited to incorporate it in my next video. But for now, I feel excuse me, Winston Churchill needs my help with battling World War II, so I'll, I'll be right back.